Okay, so we'll go back to another video. Today we have a definite integral from zero to one of a basic looking integrand, basic if um, I use that term loosely, of the natural log of one plus x squared divided by one plus x dx. So a strategy to use here is that, and I've actually covered a bunch of videos doing this same exact method where we actually try to solve for a generalization for an integral and then we plug that value back in to actually get the actual value. So that's basically the takeaway from that. But with that generalization comes more, you know, in-depth processes involved. We actually have something we have to utilize a partial fraction decomposition technique. And there's also going to be split up into even more integrals. We're actually going to have to be um, individually calculating. So it's like taking into um, evaluating each integral one at a time. Um, and also one of those integrals that we are going to evaluate from splitting that is going to involve some special functions utilizing. Specifically, we will be utilizing the Dirichlet eta function and also utilizing the Riemann zeta function as well. So a lot of things going on in today's video. So um, I already gave you basically what's going to happen and you know the gist of what's to expect. So with that, I want to make sure to jump right in. So let's first, of course, this entire integral, we'll let this be capital I. And then we like to define a function in terms of alpha. So we'll let, we'll define f of alpha. We'll let this be equal to our integral from zero to one of the natural log of one plus alpha times x squared and then divided by one plus x dx. So it's worth noting that if I were to plug f of one, so alpha equals one, then alpha of one, um, f of one is gonna equal to exactly this thing over here. So I don't beat the equal sign on this side, but from that side over here. So with this in mind, why don't we actually take the derivative? So utilizing Feynman's trick, we can actually differentiate inside of our integral. So f prime of alpha, and then it's gonna be equal to the integral from zero to one of del in respect to um, alpha of our you know function over here. So ln one plus, alpha x squared and then divided by one plus x and then dx. Then if I differentiate this, what we're gonna have is, so we're actually just taking a look at our natural log function. So utilizing that properties of its derivative for the natural logs, we have the integral from zero to one of x squared and then divided by one plus alpha x squared and then multiplied by one plus x and then dx or yeah, dx. Okay. so. With this kind of rational function, as mentioned, we will be utilizing the partial fraction decomposition. And to actually save some time, because I don't want to actually go to the Nick picky of everything, I'm actually going to let you viewers actually try this exercise and utilize the partial fraction decomposition for integrating inside over here. So I'll let this uh, be a uh, viewers um, exercise for you to try out. So if you want to verify what you'll get the following is that f prime of alpha actually utilize it after utilizing the uh, partial fraction decomposition, we are going to have the following. We will have x minus one divided by one plus alpha x squared and then multiplied by one plus x or one plus alpha, excuse me, and then plus one and then divided by alpha plus one, multiplied by x plus one, and then dx. Okay, so what we can do here is, I think you'll see that we actually have an alpha plus one. This is still the same thing either way. And we're actually gonna split this up to linearity and afterwards factor out that one over one divided by alpha plus one. So reducing things even further, I have one divided by alpha plus one, then multiply with our integral. So we use the utilize the linearity. So first we're gonna have x then divided by um, one plus alpha, uh, one plus alpha then times x squared, then dx. The next thing, so of course one uh, minus and then um, one divided by alpha plus one and then multiply with our integral from zero to one of one divided by one plus alpha x squared, then dx. And then lastly, I have one divided by alpha plus one and then multiply with our integral from zero to one of one divided by x plus one, then dx. So as you notice that this is the easier um, integral to calculate because it's antiderivative is basically a natural log function. But then there's also, we have our integral over here, which you'll notice is something into a form where if you take its antiderivative, take the integral essentially, we're gonna have something in terms of a um, arctangent function. And then over here, we'll have to utilize a u substitution over here. So of course, what you can use is that we'll actually let uh, one divided by, <clears throat> or one plus alpha x squared, we'll let that be in terms of u. 
then you differentiate that then I have you know uh, 2 times alpha times x and then dx and you just substitute and then divide over here and then factor out that 2 from the denominator afterwards and then put that outside so 2 alpha rather I forgot to say that then coming afterwards then utilizing um, well simplifying all that out so equals what we have now is that now we have everything in terms of 1 divided by 2 times alpha, then multiply by alpha plus 1, and then we take our derivative or antiderivative of the integral. We have the natural log of 1 plus alpha x squared, and then we evaluate this from 0 to 1. Then the next thing over here is 1 um, divided by, so first let me write a subtract. So this is going to be in terms of a arctangent function that um, afterwards, that's when you, after you take that antiderivative, the indefinite or definite integral, you would get the arctangent function. But make sure you actually plug in your values carefully because it's in a specific form. So um, simplifying that out, I could actually factor out the square root of alpha from that denominator outside. So we have the square root of alpha and then multiply by alpha plus one and then multiply with, now there's going to be the arctan of Inside our input is going to be the square root of alpha and then times x. Um, now we have this from 0 to 1. And then the last one is going to be 1 plus 1 divided by alpha plus 1 and then multiply by ln of x plus 1. Evaluate this from 0 to 1. Everything is straightforward. That We know that if I just plug in 0 for everything, then it's just going to be 0. So thankfully that's, um, that saves a bunch of time from that. So now if I just plug in 1, so now simplifying things further, then I have a natural log of 1 plus alpha and then divided by 2 alpha times alpha plus 1. And then next what I have is now arctan of the square root of alpha and then divided by the square root of alpha multiplied by um, alpha plus 1. And then lastly over here is going to be just plus the natural log of 2 and then divided by alpha plus 1. Okay, so that's what it comes down to the gist of it. And a little note we want to make is that specifically if I plug zero for alpha, so if I plug f of zero, if I plug zero back into over here, so that means this entire thing is actually just gonna equal zero. So basically to simplify things even further or to rather summarize all this, now, now we have a further objective we can actually you know, observe and then continue forward. We have that capital I is gonna be equal to, we know that that's gonna be f of one, but in other terms, we can say that if I were to take the integral, this is actually the same thing as taking the integral from 0 to 1 of f prime of alpha. And then we different, we integrate this in respect to alpha, so d alpha. So now that means everything we have to do is we have to take the, um, um, the integral of all this. So now that means equals. So now what we have is um, taking the integral from all this. So it means we have 1 half. I just factor out the 2 from outside. So take the integrals of ln of alpha or 1 plus alpha and divide it by alpha times alpha plus 1 d alpha. And then next is going to be subtract. So now that we have the integral from 0 to 1 of arctan of the square root of alpha and then divide it by the square root of alpha times alpha plus 1 and then d alpha. And then next we take this integral over here so then plus so I just factor out the natural log of 2 multiplied by the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 divided by alpha plus 1 and then d alpha. Okay, so let's split this up. So that means I have three different integrals we got to calculate. So that means I'll let this one, we're going to call this um, i sub 1, i sub 1 here. We're going to call this integral over here i sub 2 and we're going to let this integral be i sub 3. So we have three different integrals we need to calculate. So with that I'm actually going to erase everything from this board and then we can actually continue forward. Okay, so to reiterate everything, we have shown that so far i is going to equal to this entire integral over here, the linearity of the sums and difference of integrals. And we actually want to calculate each integral one at a time, so that's why I uh, denote these, the connotation, as i sub 1, i sub 2, and i sub 3. So once we actually evaluate those integrals over here, we can actually just substitute the value back into each of these, and then we will actually get the answer to this following over here. All right, so let's start with i sub 1. So i sub 1 is going to be this integral that I highlighted. So the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of 1 plus alpha divided by alpha times alpha plus 1. And then d alpha, 
Okay, so to break this up into um, how we can actually make this a little easier, we um, kind of do something similar to like a uh, partial fraction decomposition, although it's not really exactly that because with partial fraction decomposition, you actually have to have such that the numerator and the denominator have to be um, polynomials. In this case, we have a natural law function, which is not in the form of polynomial. So you actually kind of have to do so, somewhat of a little bit of a creative approach that actually looks somewhat in a similar fashion of a partial fraction decomposition. So doing so will allow us to have the following simplification. This can be rewritten as ln of 1 plus alpha, then divided by alpha d alpha, and then subtract with the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of 1 plus alpha, and then divided by alpha plus 1, or 1 plus alpha, either way you want to look at that. So this one's actually a little easier. This integral specific I'm talking about is a little easier to work around with. Um, you'll notice that we can actually, of course, do a little u sub. u sub being that we're going to let u equals um, the natural log of 1 plus alpha. Then, of course, if I differentiate both sides, I have that du is going to equal 1 divided by 1 plus alpha and then d alpha. Then, so doing also, so that means I have that this is going to be the integral of just u and then du. Then putting this all back together, I have that this is going to be u squared. Uh, one half divided by u squared, rather, and then putting back the u that we put in, so that means this is going to be one half, and then ln of or ln square of one plus alpha. Okay, so with that, that means that we actually just have to plug our bounds from zero to one. If I plug in zero, so that means this whole thing's going to be zero. However, if I plug in one, so that means this thing's just going to equal one half, and then ln square at two. So that's what we can just put back over here. Okay, so with that, now we have to actually uh, calculate this integral over here. Natural log of 1 plus alpha and then divided by alpha. So some things you'll notice is that specifically we'll be actually be utilizing the McLaren series. So the McLaren series of the natural log of 1 plus alpha is written as the following. So we have that the natural log of 1 plus alpha is going to equal to this infinite sum for n is equal to 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the power n plus 1 multiplied by alpha to the power n and then divided by n such that alpha is in the range from negative 1 um, not inclusive to positive 1 inclusive. So with this now I just substitute this back in over here so that means now um, now what we have is the integral from 0 to 1 and then plug in the um, replace for the McLaren series n is equal to 1 of now negative 1 to the power n plus 1 and then I have an alpha on the bottom, like that's the same thing written as alpha to the negative one. So I can actually just put that back in that base over here. So that I have alpha to the power n subtract one and then divided by n and then d alpha. And then I can actually integrate things. So let me actually put in the natural log uh, square of two divided by two, just so I don't forget. So now everything just substitute back in or rather evaluated. So now I have infinity n is equal to one. So that means I have a plus one if I actually perform the, uh, perform the integral and then divide by the n, so I have an n square on the bottom. So that means I plug in the one, that means one goes in here, so it's just gonna be one, and then zero is gonna be zero. So putting that back together, so now what we have is that this is gonna be, so negative one to the power n plus one, and then divided by n square, and then subtract ln square of two, and then divided by two. And then another thing we'll be using is that we actually have two formulas that relates with the uh, Dirichlet, Dirichlet eta function. So, well, first I write the Dirichlet, um, Dirichlet eta function, it's some um, representation. So, well, eta of s, we're gonna put this, is gonna equal to this infinite sum over here. So infinity, and then n is equal to one of negative one to the power n plus one, and then divided by n to the power s. And then the formula we'll be using is that this is a uh, functional equation relation with the Riemann's eta function, is that eta of s is the same thing written as one subtract two to the power one minus s, and then multiply the Riemann zeta at s. Okay, so with this in mind, we'll note that specifically this is the same thing as eta of two. So that means I just plug in two back into over here. And then now what I can do is now plug in two for over here to this um, functional equation over here. So what we have now is that eta of two is gonna be equal to, so one subtract two to the power one minus two, so negative one. So that means basically it's one minus one half. So that means that's one half and then multiply by the Riemann zeta of two, which is Basil's problem. So that means pi squared divided by six, which means that this is just simply just gonna equal pi squared divided by 16. 
So that means that's where it goes over here. Sorry for that squeak in front of marker. Okay, so I just put that back in over here. And so the next thing we need to calculate is I sub two. So I sub two is gonna be our integral zero to one. So arc tan of the square root of alpha and then divided by square root of alpha multiplied by alpha plus one and then d alpha. So then we may actually actually perform another u sub. So we'll let u equals the square root of alpha. And so du is just basically just gonna equal one divided by two um, times square root of alpha and then d alpha. So now over here, that means I might just substitute this back in. So I actually multiplied two over here and then I can actually factor out the two. So I have two times. So now our integral is gonna be, so I'm gonna change our bound. So actually this is still gonna be from zero to one, thankfully. And so now I have arc tan of just u. And then over here, I have square root of alpha, so u. And then back over here, well, actually, that just disappears because of the du differential we just substitute. So alpha over here, so I'll just square that. So basically, this is just going to be u square and then plus one and then du. And so what we'll do here is now we'll utilize yet another u sub. We'll call this t. We'll let t be arc tan of u. And so that means dt, guess what, is going to be equal to 1 divided by u squared plus 1 and then du, which you can substitute this back over here. So that means basically now this is just 2 times the integral. So now I actually just plug in our bounds. Our bounds are going to change actually. So that means this is going to be from 0 and then to pi divided by 4 of just t dt. So skipping all the preliminary steps, this is pretty straightforward to do. You're going to get that this is actually simply just going to equal pi squared and then divide it by 16. Um, I forgot, this is actually, I did the math wrong here. This is supposed to be um, 12, so my mistake for over here. So pi squared divided by 12, and then pi squared divided by 16 for i sub one and i sub two respectively. Okay, so now our last thing we need to calculate is i sub three, which is the easiest integral to calculate, which this is just your standard natural log function. So zero to one, of one divided by alpha plus one d alpha, which is just equal to the natural log of just alpha plus one. Evaluate this from zero to one, you're gonna get that this is just simply just ln of two. All right, so now last thing to do is now just substitute our i sub one, uh, i sub one, i sub two, and i sub three over here. So now basically to put everything back together, so let me actually use, um, change it to a different marker for this one. So now to simply put everything back together, I have i is gonna equal to one half multiply with i sub one, then subtract i sub two, and then add this with ln sub ln, ln of two multiplied by i sub three. And then to plug everything back together, so that means I have, so one half, then multiply by pi squared divided by 12, and then minus um, ln squared of two, and then divided by two, goes over here. Okay, and then subtract um, pi squared divided by 16, and then add this with ln of two. So to skip all the simplification, so to put everything back in together into just a final answer to what we have, you're gonna get that capital I, our given integral is gonna be, the final answer is gonna be three times ln squared of two divided by four, and then subtract pi squared divided by 48. And so with that, that is our final answer to our integral over here from a, uh, you know, looks easy from a loose, I use that as a loosely um, term. So everything from here that we actually utilize partial fraction decomposition, and then we just usually split this up from the generalization, of course, and then we actually come to this where we have to individually calculate each integrals one by one, which leads to um, separate answers that we just plug in, which leads to the final answer over here, just like that. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.